The Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 on Thursday indicated that Nigeria was making headway in getting local cures for COVID-19. The PTF Chairman and Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, gave this indication at the Task Force press conference in Abuja. He said the Complementary and Alternative Medicine Department of the Federal Ministry of Health had forwarded some of the claims for COVID-19 cure to the National Agency for Food and Drugs Administration and Control, NAVDAC. According to the SGF, some of the claims for COVID-19 cures have met preliminary requirements, but the NAPDAC would evaluate them for listing. Joining us live by Skype is the Director General, NAPDAC, Professor Mojishola Adeyaye. Good afternoon, Professor, and thank you for joining us. Thank you. How are you doing this evening, ma'am? Doing wonderful. Good to know. Uh, about remedies to COVID-19, a realistic option at this point, or are NAPDAC merely bowing to the pressures to be seen as an exploring homegrown solutions? Uh, there is no pressure at all. There is no pressure on NAPDAC. Uh, I'm a proponent of herbal medicines. Uh, in fact, we started the herbal medicine product committee last year, uh, March, in NAPDAC is a national committee. So that's how committed NAVDAC is uh, to herbal medicines. But in relation with uh, uh, COVID-19, uh, we have not gotten any application yet. There have been interests uh, that have been expressed, and we are waiting as we speak for them to submit their uh, protocol, uh, which we will review. Uh, and uh, if it passes uh, the review protest, then they can go ahead for the uh, clinical trials. But before clinical trials, the product has to be listed, meaning we have to conduct safety tests. NAVDAC has to conduct a safety test. Uh, if, it is where, if it is a very promising uh, candidate, we can expedite uh, the safety uh, test. And then, you know, the clinical trial may proceed. But right now, we just got interest, not applications yet. Prior to this pandemic, how much of endorsement does the agency has on herbal drugs? Oh, the agency has, as we speak, we have hundreds of herbal products that we listed, meaning uh, registered temporarily for two years, and then after that, renewal. Uh, so the agency has always been uh, interested in herbal medicines. Uh, but there was a problem which I discovered uh, after the formation of the Herbal Products Committee that there was distrust between the uh, herbalists or the practitioners and the researchers. And those two have to come together. Without coming together, there will not be any advances in herbal medicines. So that is part of what we've been doing. Uh, we had a meeting on Thursday last week and uh, we invited uh, the trademark uh, registrar. We invited the DG of uh, NOTAP. Uh, and then NAVDAC has already developed a confidentiality agreement where NAVDAC will just be the, the midwife or, or the witness, so to say, to the two sides, the researchers and the uh, practitioners, signing an agreement that if, the, if there's a data that is exchanged between the two, those, dat those data will be kept confidential. This is what we are trying to uh, develop between the two, two groups, uh, because without confidentiality, without knowledge of patenting, pro uh, protection of intellectual property, uh, we may not be able to move ahead. But uh, we are already crossing those orders. So there are clearly some challenges of standardization and verification of materials used in the drugs. Is NAVDAC equipped to monitor for compliance, especially at the time when they have more than enough on their plate? Oh, yes. Uh, NAVDAC is uh, equipped. We're, we are getting equipped gradually, uh, but we have the equipment that we need as far as herbal medicine uh, verification or standardization uh, is concerned uh, because, uh, you know, I, I know what it takes and uh, we've been accumulating or buying uh, pieces of equipment uh, to meet the challenge. Now, let's talk about the endorsement of clinical trial. How, how does this interest in herbal remedies align with endorsement of clinical trial of chloroquine 
and the news of a solidarity testing of the WHO overseen, or are we adopting a, a blunderbuss approach? Well, a uh, clinical trial uh, is a gradual process. It is a systematic process. If somebody has uh, a product that they want to get you know, into clinical trial, uh, that uh, sponsor, we will call it sponsor, uh, will have to get ethics approval from an institution university or hospital, uh, once that person gets uh, the ethics committee approval, meaning they will submit a protocol to the uh, ethics committee, then the next thing is to come to NAVDAC. If it is only uh, trial sites that are not more than three, if they are more than three, they have to go to NREC. But if they are less than, if they are three or less, then they come to NAVDAC with the same protocol or modified after the uh, approval at the hospital or the institution. And then we go through, the, we go through it uh, because we have to follow international standards. We have to make sure that the subject uh, or the patient is protected. And it is the Helsinki Accord that we have to follow to make sure that the subjects are, are protected during the clinical trial. So. Once we finish the approval, uh, if it is successful, they can go ahead, but we have to also inspect the site uh, because the site may affect the outcome of the clinical trial. In, in terms of uh, COVID-19, uh, of course, there is a clinical trial that is about to start in Lagos, but there is what is called the solidarity trial, which uh, you may have a particular center uh, like Lagos State, that have submitted their protocol, they're going to look at chloroquine, hydroxychloroquine, but the solidarity trial goes beyond one center. It may involve different hospitals, but they now have to link, uh, the Lagos has to link with them or they link with Lagos so that the data that they are collecting in the, in the other centers can feed into what Lagos is doing. It can also uh, come, uh, go across nations this solidarity, the solidarity trial. But at least for Nigeria, uh, we're trying to network, so to say, uh, for those who are using the same uh, drug. And now they would kind of tailor it in terms of what is the control so that it will be similar to what uh, the seed or the core center uh, is doing. Uh, the, and it's the same process for both uh, orthodox and uh, herbal uh, medicines. Uh, the, you know, still has to go through, you know, the process has to be the same thing. You know. Now, ma'am, should, should there be potentially a viable remedy to present itself by way of the herbal remedy? Uh, what sort of time span are we looking at before such a drug could be patented and produced in adequate enough quantities to make a difference? That's a very good uh, question uh, because sustainability uh, of the product is extremely important, especially knowing that uh, if it's for herbal, if, if it is herbal medicine, it is subject to to, to the vegetation, to the season. Uh, but by and large, uh, we have wet and dry season. Uh, the harvesting can be done uh, within a particular season, and then you know, okay, it, it can be kept. But in terms of COVID-19, of what we are talking about. Uh, if it is clinical trial, first of all, you are looking at restricted number. So it's not like you're going to use it for 1,000 people. At the beginning, it may be, you know, 100 or, you know, even less than 100. So you, you will have enough material uh, for the clinical trial. And if that clinical trial is successful or is indicative that uh, the, pro the product is efficacious, then uh, the market authorization holder meaning the person that is going to market it, uh, can then start looking forward to more harvesting and uh, making more of the product. DG Navdak, it's yeah. always a pleasure having you join us on the news, and thank you for your time. Thank you so much. It's always good to be here. Thank you.